Hey everyone, welcome to another episode about the Lego Train Automated Container Terminal. Last episode I was looking at how to solve the problem of the train not stopping every, every time on the same spot. And you guys came up with some solutions to prevent me from cutting the sleepers away, because that was my solution of a uh, piece of uh, track. Now, your solutions were very welcome, of course, but most solutions weren't applicable since I was needing to uh, adjust the crane too much or uh, physically stop the train with a block or something like that. Uh, those kind of options, uh, I do not want to go there. So if you want to know more about the solutions and uh, what I thought of that, please head, uh, head over to the previous video in the comment section. You'll find uh, everything about that. So in the end, I get stuck with uh, the system that I already had in mind, which was a movable switch, which you see here, a magnetic sensor that I can move along the track. Now, the whole idea is that um, the train arrives, there's a magnet underneath the wagon here. Here you go. And um, this magnet will hit the, uh, sorry, this magnet will hit the uh, sensor and the system knows that the train has arrived and uh, the system makes sure that the train stops but the train always overshoots a few stops before it stops and um, this could be, I don't know, four, st four stops or five stops or maybe eight stops it depends on the locomotive, on the motor, wear and tear of the motor not every motor is the same, unfortunately so the result of that is that I do not know exactly where the train stops so I do not know exactly where to go with my red crane and unload containers. Now to counter this problem, I came up with this solution that you see here, which is a movable reed switch. This is the magnetic sensor and it can move along the track. It's now connected to the uh, to a powered up uh, battery box. And as you can see, it can move along pretty nicely. Now it won't go as fast as you see here because it needs to be more precise, but the battery box only gives off uh, the 100% uh, signal, but it will be different. Uh, one challenge was actually to hide the cable, you know, because the cable wants to, tends to go up, but now I managed it somehow to have it between, between the tracks and uh, that it stays there. Now, um, the motor itself needs to be connected to the powered up hub that will be on the red crane on the uh, gray part that you see there and uh, that means that the motor cable needs to run from the motor all the way through the cable chain to the um, red crane over there so there's a pretty long distance that the uh, cable needs to uh, to be in and uh, that's why I extended this cable that you see here so there's a, uh, the gray extension between it. I soldered it in between. So when I was soldering this extension, I thought like, wouldn't that be a problem for uh, for the digital signals? Because I know, you know, digital signals are square uh, waves uh, going through a cable. And when you go through a cable with uh, high impedance or uh, resistance, then um, the square waves aren't square anymore when they get out of the cable. Um, and I thought, well, I had problems that I could not solve. And I I didn't know why they were there, the problems. Um, with the previous controller that I used, and that was a Arduino shield for uh, for the uh, EV3 and NXT motors. And um, that was one reason why I uh, did go to this uh, powered up hub system. Um, so maybe it wasn't the controller but it was a long cables because also in, the, in that crane I used long cables but so it, it could be an issue I don't know we'll just have to test it and see what uh, what it does so I need to uh, put it in the in the chain and then I connect it to the power hub powered up hub speaking of which uh, the powered up hub needs power of course and um, that's what you see here this board I used in the uh, the previous version of the crane it's a bit of an overkill because it has also motor controllers that I don't use anymore because the motors will be controlled by the powered up hub. But the rest will be useful, which is a uh, 9 volt, uh, how do you call that, regulator and a 5 volt regulator because there's 12 volts coming in. 
9 volts is used by the uh, powered up hub and 5 volts is used for the censoring stuff and also for the uh, microcontroller that will speak wirelessly with the powered up hub. So I'm not programming the powered up hub, but I'm only talking to it through a microcontroller. The same way I've used that on the uh, blue crane. Now the red LEDs that you see here, uh, those are um, for the magnetic sensors. I had a lot of them in the previous crane. I have now only one, so I'm going to connect it. And when I connect it, I can see if the uh, if the um, sensor detects a magnetic field or not. So uh, I'm going to show you that right now. So I connected the whole thing to power, and as you can see, the green light, the LED is on. And the microcontroller, there's also some light flickering going on, so that works as well. And um, now I'm going to move the wagon. Here's the sensor, I'm going to move the wagon with the magnet, and there should be a red LED being enabled. Here we go. You see, so that works. So there's a, a sensor here, also that cable. I used the cable that already was in, in here, in the cable uh, chain, it runs all the way through the cable chain to here and when I move it you can see and I can use that as an input the cable is already here I can use this as an input that goes to the uh, microcontroller somewhere one of those pins so I can detect if there's a train present or not so um, well that's about it for this uh, update so thank you for watching once again uh, subscribe if you haven't done so, drop me a like if you like this uh, video and I uh, hope to see you next time. Bye!